um, Members, um, before we actually start the meeting um, proper, that as this is the first formal council meeting um, uh, since the death of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, I should like to invite all members present, please, and, and um, visiting speakers, please do um, stand and observe um, a minute's silence. As we do so, could we also please keep in our thoughts the family um, of the former executive director, Tracy Windsor, um, as she has also um, sadly passed away. So please could I ask everybody, would you please make sure you're on mute and please could you all turn your cameras off. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you all very much indeed. OK, um, so as we as we start the meeting, I should just uh, like to just remind everybody um, that please could you uh, keep your microphones on mute and actually I'm going to ask everybody as well to keep your videos off unless you are actually at the point you've been invited to speak. This is to help with um, the just generally with the bandwidth because we're finding with development management for some reason, every time we are having um, internet issues with people not being able to maintain their connection, which is um, obviously means we have to pause proceedings. So it'd be very helpful if everybody could just keep mute, keep videos off unless you're actually speaking and see if that will actually help the situation a bit. Um, if any member, of course, does lose connection, then we will need to adjourn the meeting just or just to pause the meeting um, to allow you to come back online because you need to be sure that you have heard everything. And we only have one application before us this morning, and that will follow the usual procedure with our case officer presenting the report, followed by registered speakers being invited to speak, um, with members of the committee being able to question each speaker on points of clarity if they so wish. Um, then um, we will get to that point when the recommendation will be moved and seconded, which will enable debate and is not an indication as to how the mover or seconder will actually vote. It's just to enable the procedure to continue properly. Um, and also, just as I always do, reminding members that if anyone is minded to vote against um, the recommendation, which results in the application being refused, then you will need to be prepared to give clear reasons for that refusal, um, as that is what will be relied on at any subsequent appeal. Um, so could I please remind members to remain focused on the application being considered and keep questions and comments short and to the point and relevant to the application. The minute taker will find it harder than normal to identify who is speaking and what is being said. So speak, please speak clearly and at a reasonable pay, pace and where an officer wishes to speak, they will indicate using the chat facility. Um, officers that we have with us this morning um, supporting, um, supporting the process is Mr. Weimer, who's um, Head of Development Management. We have um, Ms. Hoare, who will be taking the roll call minutes and the votes. Um, Ms. Young, who's Democratic Services, who will be the gatekeeper and the timekeeper. Um, and we also have the planning officer. Uh, and um, I think we have Becky Folds as well, who's our legal officer. Um, other staff member who are in present are just helping out, making sure we all run smoothly. OK, thank you very much. So we will now move to the agenda and item one is. A po oh, no, sorry, we need to take the roll call. Forgot about that bit as we started. Um, so, so over to you for the roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. 
Councillor Cheadle. I'm here and I can hear. Thank you. Councillor Crozier. I'm here and I can hear. Thank you. Councillor Hipsey. Uh, hearing you loud and clear. Thank you. Councillor Mott. <coughs> Present. Thank you. Councillor Moyes. Present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. I'm present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Renders. Yes, present and can hear. Thank you. Councillor Vachon. Present and can hear. Thank you. And Councillor Yelland. Present and can hear. Thank, Thank you. you. So item one on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. We obviously don't have any or members are present. <laughs> item two is declarations of interest. So members are invited to declare any personal or disclosable pecuniary interest, including the nature and extent of such interest they may have in any items to be considered at this meeting. Um, anybody have an interest they wish to declare? If so, please, could you indicate? Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. I would declare an interest as a member of the Devon Building Control Partnership Management Board. Thank you. Any other declarations of interest? No. OK, I should just uh, declare an interest in that I have been contacted um, by um, an objector regarding the application that is before us. Um, and I believe uh, Ms. Stanbury will be ad addressing the, the points that were actually raised. But I confirm that I'm here with an open mind and um, to listen to all views. OK, thank you. So um, item three is items requiring urgent attention and we don't have any. Item four, confirmation of minutes um, of the meeting held on the 23rd of March, 2021. Is everybody happy that I sign them as a true and accurate record? If anybody sees any errors or omissions, could you please shout out now? Hi, um, Chair, I missed off the speakers on the uh, planning uh, for um, Beer Alston. OK, just have a. Not to be forgotten, of course. Um, I believe you weren't um, down officially as a registered speaker because you spoke at the first meeting. I think you you were just speaking in your capacity as um, a member of the committee. Am I correct? I was speaking whichever is, I don't mind. You are correct, Chairman. Uh, Councillor yeah. Pierce here. Um, yeah. Councillor Crozier spoke at the uh, first uh, yeah. uh, meeting that we had, and therefore that would have been uh, recorded, recorded in that, those minutes for that meeting. That was not correct. Um, it does actually have Councillor Musgrave down as the parish council representative, but I think he was speaking as a ward member. Ward member, correct. Ms. Hoare, you there? We, we, yes, I am. Yes, we, we can yeah. get that, that changed, um, okay. Chair. And, uh, but yeah. Thank you. Thank, OK, thank you. So apart from that, um, everybody happy with that amendment that we sign them as true and accurate record? No further comments, so I will take that by exception as yes. Thank you. So we now move on to planning application um, uh, 4205 forward slash 19 forward slash HHO 11A Mount Tavy Road, which can be found on pages 7 to 18 of your agenda. And I will now hand over to the planning officer and I will turn my camera off. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully everybody can see the presentation on their screens. We can, yes, thank you. Yep. OK, thank you. OK, so application is 11A, apologies, that should say Mount Tavy Road, not Mary Tavy Road in Tavistock. So I'll just run through the slides. Before I do that, um, two updates. We've had further Environment Agency correspondence. Um, the full details of that have gone on the public file, um, but it essentially repeats their previous correspondence, which members have in the um, report in the agenda. Uh, just to sum up their conclusions, um, and I'll read an extract from it, not overly happy with the decking and would prefer it to be reduced in size, but given the decking is unlikely to increase, fl increase flood risk to others, we would not pursue an objection. Um, and a point of clarification as well, in my report under the proposal section, um, I've mentioned there's a two metre um, additional projection compared to what was approved. Um, I'll, I will show uh, slides of what was actually approved previously for, cl uh, for clarity. Um, having 
checked and measured and compared both plans, it appears the additional projection compared to what was approved is actually around 1.75 metres, um, not two metres. It's not, not significantly different. So going through the slide, so the application site is outlined here in the hatched area. Um, worth noting, there's a bit um, directly behind the property which actually belongs to the adjacent property. This is the, ob the objector's house. So this bit of garden here doesn't belong to the application property. When you see the photos, you will note there is a garden shed here. So aerial image, I've outlined in red um, the extent of the decking just to make it clear. I would also point out, whilst it's difficult to see because of all the trees along the riverbank on both sides, there are sort of various structures um, along the river, none of which do project out to the extent that this one does. But nonetheless, there are sort of st structures along there, people's back gardens um, back onto the river. So to set the context, um, so this is the road at the front of the property. This is the property itself. The decking is tucked away at the back. So moving on to the decking, so based on um, the drawings and measurements, um, that I took on site when I visited end of October last year. Um, I've put the measurements on the slide so members can see those. So I'll just take, take you around the decking. So this is looking towards the applicant's other property here. This is showing the projection over the river. Um, I've got measurements on the, on the drawings later on so members can see that. Um, more clearly. So this is just moving around. This is the fence um, between the site and the objector's property. So the other side of this fence is a little bit of garden area I mentioned a little while ago. Um, this is the view. I was, wasn't was leaning over. I was just stood on the edge of the decking. So this is the, the glass screening. This is the view you get towards a neighbour's property. Um, I have blanked out the centre area because this is a view you only get from the decking. It's not a view um, in the public domain, so I'm not displaying um, that view for members and, and public benefit. So this is just a view looking back towards the property. So you can see how the decking relates to the property itself. Uh, this is a view I took from Beagle Bridge end of October last year. Decking would be somewhere in here. It, it could not be seen. I went back out on site yesterday. Um, this is the view I got yesterday. This was taken with my phone and I zoomed in as much as I could before the, the photo became too blurry. You couldn't see it. So the decking is roughly here. You can see... Um, neighbour's garden sheds here. This is a photo taken from the footpath um, at the other end of the river where it, um, the A386 crosses the river. Again, you, you can't see the decking from here. It would be somewhere back in this location. Um, I went back out on site yesterday to take this photo. Um, you will note slightly later when the objector speaks that she has um, sent in her own photos. So I went back out to the viaduct path. And so just a little distance away from the council offices. Um, on the left here, this was a photo taken with my phone without zooming in at all. Um, so you can see I've circled the application property in red here. You can't really make out the decking there. I zoomed in as this is the faux zoom on my phone camera. The decking is, is this here, and you can just make out the glass of the balcony running along there. Um, this is another image at the bottom was taken yesterday. When I did my first site visit last year, um, I walked along Parkwood Road and was not able to see the decking from anywhere due to, there's obviously there's quite a lot of, of dwellings there. Where there are gaps between dwellings, there's a lot of vegetation. So this is a... The top image was a screenshot from Google. Um, bottom is the photo I took yesterday. So you can see this is the application property. And again, you can make out the glass screen running along there. That's the dividing fence between the this property and then the objector's garden. 
So just moving on to the plan. So this is the application site in red. So the decking is here. This is the um, applicant's other property they own. So moving on to the plan. So the decking is shown here. Um, I put the measurements on the bottom. So it's slightly over six meter projection from the house, 10.2 meters in width, and approximately 1.7 meters projection on this side from the riverbank, and 1.39 projection from the riverbank on this side. This hatched area here um, is what's been referred to as the step. So that's that's in the environment agency's comments. So this is the elevation of the decking as it's built. So you don't really see a lot here other than the glass screen along there facing the river. This um, sort of outline here again is, is showing the steps. So we have a cross section um, and the next slide I've put some more measurements on it. So this shows the neighbour's fence that's there and the glass handrail around the decking. It shows its projection out there and these are the existing steps. So I've put some measurements on here. Um, at this point, using this as the edge of the riverbank, it's showing sort of 1.4 metre projection. This elevation is showing sort of one, just over 1.7 metres projection. Uh, again, this shows the structures here and here that the applicant has put in to support the steels. And I've got some photos of, of the steels as well to show you. I've put this photo in. Apologies, it's probably not coming out very clear for you. This is the proposed drainage. Uh, so there's attenuation tank shown here, which will be piped out to the river. Um, the Environment Agency haven't objected to that. South West Water have raised no objections either. Um, you'll note in the report, the applicant does need to seek separate consents to do those works. So this is the approved scheme. It was part of the, the actual refurb of the bungalow itself. So it was proposed to increase the, the patio area. Um, measuring off the electronic plans, um, I got a measurement of 4.4 metres from the house to the edge. Again, a similar width, the full width there. So these are some photos taken from the applicant's engineering report. So the top photo here shows the steels that have gone in um, and there's some concrete um, underneath those. Obviously, the decking is laid on top of the steels. This image to the right, this this is the steps that I mentioned earlier, the steps that are referred to through the Environment Agency. This is looking in the opposite direction. Again, you can just make out the steps of these, this concrete structure here. Um, and this is another photo which shows the riverbank further along to the west. So this this fence, um, I believe that's that's the fence at the back of the objector's garden. So that's it for my presentation and the recommendation is one of approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our questions, Councillor Cheadle. Well, thank you. Um, a, a, a sort of technical question, if I may. Who owns the space uh, ab effectively above the river, um, which is now overhung by this structure? Thank you. My understanding is, um, as with most water courses, there are riparian rights. So the applicant would, whilst they don't sort of physically own it, they have rights extending out into the riverbank. What rights to construct um, things in that space? Um, without knowing exactly what riparian rights allow, I I don't know whether Becky is better placed to answer that question. I mean, my, 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 the reason for my question is, is this a legal structure? At the moment, we, what we're doing, we're considering whether um, we can grant planning consent or not. Um, so we're looking from a planning perspective. Ms. Folds, are you able to, you, you there, can you come in regarding 
um, I riparian rights? I'm, I'm afraid I can't answer that question. Um, I can look into it now, but I can't answer it directly with any um, guarantee of accuracy. My apologies for that. Okay, um, I can quick look now, but I, I, I don't think you are precluded from determining the application. Okay, um, Councillor Mott. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mrs. Stanbury, can I please ask in the photos that you're showing on screen at the moment, the one in the top right hand corner with the steps going down, can you tell me, are they within the application boundary or are they in the neighbouring property for access down through? These steps here that I'm highlighting, yeah, yeah. they, um, I just want, I'll go back to the plans. So they are here. So the application boundary sort of runs from here to here. So that they're underneath the decking, underneath the application site, if that makes so, sense. So, so they belong to the property that we're discussing, 11A at the moment? I believe they do, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Moyes? Um, yes. Do, um, are there any stanchions or, or whatever you'd like to call them actually in the river or is the decking supported by the steels coming out horizontally the decking is solely supported by those steels as to, right. the, to the best of my knowledge there is there is nothing that has gone in um into the river. In, into yeah yeah okay thank you and councillor hipsey uh thank you chair um i believe this area falls within the cornwall and west devon mining landscape World Heritage Site and is therefore subject to policy Dev 22 within the JLP. First of all, can we please confirm that? And secondly, um, I wonder if we have a formal and separate heritage assessment for this um, uh, to support this application, please. Well, yeah, as is in the report, it is in the World Heritage Site, um, Dev. 22 is the historic environment policy. Um, this application came in in 2019. Um, no, there was not a heritage assessment with it. Thank you. Okay. So that's actually in contravention to uh, policy Dev 22, paragraph 7. Um, what? What is in contravention to that? Just to be clear, well, I'm the just fact look there up. isn't a, um, a heritage assessment. Uh, perhaps this is for debate, uh, Chair. Uh, would you like me to read it? Um, I think uh, Mr. Stanbury's got the got it there. I'm just looking out. Yeah, all development proposals should be informed by proportionate historic environment assessments and evaluations. These will identify the significance of all heritage assets that would be affected by the proposals the nature and degree of any effects and demonstrate how any harm will be avoided, minimised or mitigated. Yeah, thank you. OK. Um, Ms Folds, are you um, able to come back in regarding the riparian rights or responsibilities? Uh, not so much responsibilities, but I've, I've just um, confirmed that there, uh, there is a rebuttable presumption that where a property abuts a natural non-tidal river or stream, and I think that's the case here, the boundary of the property extends to the centre line of the river. Uh, so I, I think we're certainly able to deal with the application. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hipsey, is that a legacy hand or um, did you wish to come back with another question? Uh, no, sorry, Chair, that's a legacy. Thank you. Members, does anybody else? Uh, Councillor Moyes? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Mrs. Fold said the boundary of the property went to the middle of the river, but um, I didn't hear anything being said about building over it. Did I miss something or I think th this is a slightly different situation? Well, repairing rights, if my memory serves me correctly, is about sort of, um, you know, who, who owns which bit, isn't it? Um, so responsible for clearing the sort of river clear and that sort of thing but this is false exactly <laughs> yeah that's my point 
so um the so the owner or the person who has control of the water course at that stretch of their property is responsible for it so that that's uh, uh those are those are responsibilities i can't advise further on um uh, above the land um uh, but I, I i certainly do not think uh we we are prevented from determining the application on the basis of what of the of the airspace above above the uh, property um and, and and if there was a person who was objecting um on that basis they would have to bring their own um civil argument to say that the person wasn't entitled to um develop above that space okay. so it's so it's not a first of clarity it's not a material planning consideration is in it my, yeah in, in my view no you're perfectly able to determine the application okay I have Councillor Hipsy, then Councillor Cheadle. Uh, thanks again, Chair. Um, I wonder if uh, um, anybody can please confirm that the use of this property is restricted to residential, and there's no com there's no um, no possibility of this being used for commercial purposes. Please. Bearing in mind, we are just looking at the decking, no other elements of the um, of the building or associated pieces in ownership. Yeah, thanks. Chair. I'm I'm just concerned about the possible use of the decking for other than residential purposes. Okay, who would like to come back on that one, please? Um, I could answer that. I, I'm showing the um, location plan. So the red line is the application site. 11A is a residential bungalow. The garden goes with that. Um, 11B has had commercial use in the past. Um, we have recently refused a lawful development certificate confirming um, that commercial use because the, the last use we have, um, to our knowledge, on this site um, was for domestic storage in conjunction with this property as part of its renovation. Um, so the decking is with the bungalow, which is residential. Thank you. And uh, just to confirm that uh, 11B is owned by the same owner as 11A. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Cheadle, please. Thanks very much. Uh, could you just ha ha hang on with that diagram that's in front of us? Because my question is relevant to that. Um, is the red line shown on that diagram the curtilage of the property? Um, a red line indicates the application site boundary um i guess in this case you could also call it the curtilage yeah so is the development that's currently there um out with the application boundary no i don't believe it is you don't show it going into the river i if can you see my cursor i can yeah so this line here is the top of the riverbank right i believe that line there is the bottom of the riverbank so that this little bit either side here is a projection over into the river so would you say the projection is inside the curtilage of the property or outside I would say the, the bit that projects over the river, technically you would say it's outside of the curtain of the property, but uh, you know that, that doesn't have any, any bearing on the decision-making process or the recommendation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and um, there is also permitted development rights here as well, I believe. Um, uh, Mr. Weimer, you have your hand up. I don't know if uh, you, you can add any colour to this. Thank you. Um, Cheryl, I think you're still... we, we can't hear you, Mr. Weimer. You, you've you sound like you're in a bucket. Is that better? <laughs> That's better, yeah. Um, my office has been described as many things. It's the first <laughs> time it's been described as a bucket. Um, that's good. Um, Cheryl, I think it'd be useful if you could go back to the picture that showed the stanchions and the riverbank. There's a photograph that showed this. I think it was the steps as well. Yeah, that's the one. So if you... If, um, if, if you look at the the bottom left hand um, image, I think um, I think that that demonstrates quite 
clearly um, what Cheryl has, has just said. That I, I, it would appear to me that the the decking and the stanchions don't go beyond the the, the lower part of the bank there, which there are steps down to. Um, I think there's there, there would be, I think, an interesting academic argument around whether the curtilage stops at the top of that bank or the bottom of the bank, because there are steps going down to it. I think there's probably an argument to say it's all within um, within the curtilage. But I also agree with Cheryl that I don't think it's a, a determining factor on this, in this particular application. But I, I hopefully can sort of achieve that. That answers a question about how far over does it does it sail into the into the water course? Councillor Cheadle, are you happy with that? Sorry, I, yeah, I, I, I get the argument. I mean, it's okay. debatable, I think. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll save that one for debate, I think. Okay, thank you. Any other um, members, any other questions? No, okay, thank you. Um, in which case, we will now move on to um, our registered speakers. So, again, if I can just ask anybody who isn't um, a speaker to turn your microphone and turn your video off just to help be very helpful thank you and um, our objectives registered is uh, Dr Andrew um, Dr Andrew are you there can and can you confirm if you can if we speak to me so we know you can hear us we can hear you you're welcome to put your video on of course yes yes can you hear me now I can hear you now. Thank you very much indeed. Ah, I can see you as well. That's wonderful. I will keep my video on so you don't look like you're talking to a blank screen. It might make you feel a bit more welcome. Um, I, th I think you've already been been advised by the um, uh, uh, by, by democratic services, but I am conscious that there are people watching on YouTube who won't know the, the way things work. So you you do have three minutes in which um, to make your presentation. Um, Ms. Young will give you a, a thirty second warning as you get towards the end, and she will also tell you just say time when we get to the end of the three minutes. And at the end of that time, I if you haven't already finished, I will need to interrupt you to ask you to wrap up, please. Um, and members will have the option to ask you any questions if they wish to do so at that point. OK, so um, when you're ready and in your own time, um, away you go. Thank you. OK, uh, can I have the first uh, the first slide, please? In three statements in her report, the case officer states that the decking cannot be seen from public vantage points. And this is a key point in her determination of the balance of this application and in her recommendation of conditional approval. In fact, there are at least three public vantage points from where it can be seen, so the planning balance has changed. This view is from the pavement outside 10 Parkwood Road across the river from the site. Next slide, please. The view from Viaduct Walk. Next slide, please. The view upriver from Vigo Bridge is particularly important as the bridge is Grade 2 listed, which makes its setting significant, as attested by the Conservation Officer. While in the summer the view of the decking is softened by foliage, in the autumn and winter it is clearly visible. Historic England states that the impact of seasonal changes needs to be considered when views and settings are, are a, a, a point in question. Next slide, please. Nearby gardens are landscaped with native trees and plants, affording the river the natural aspect which makes it so special in an urban environment. The decking is over obtrusive and made of materials, glass and steel, which will not weather sufficiently to lessen its stark appearance. It does not accord with materials used in the Bedford cottages between which it is sited, nor with Victorian houses opposite, all of which make positive contributions to the interest of the conservation area and World Heritage Site. There is no visual harmony, the decking being entirely out of keeping with its landscape, and it can only be considered as harmful. Next slide, please. A condition of screening to a height of 1.8 metres along the west side is suggested to prevent views into the neighbouring garden, but government guidance notes that screening can only mitigate negative impacts rather than removing them and can actually have as intrusive an effect on the setting as the development it seeks to mitigate. Next slide, please. This retrospective application must be considered on the facts of this case, not on any potential fallback positions of which there are many. I would ask the committee to heed the wise words of the conservation officer, an expert in his field, 
that the decking fails to either preserve or enhance the character or appearance of the conservation area, and there is no public benefit to balance the harm. As he states, it would be entirely possible to have a modest structure to facilitate appreciation of the river frontage without harm. Were this application to be approved, it would set a most unwelcome precedent. In 1832, the redoubtable Mrs. Bray wrote of the Tavy and Tavistock, the river here is particularly beautiful. I feel deeply that we all have a duty to keep it so. And I would add one more comment in response to Mr. Weimer's comments. Um, the, the, is that time? That's right, yes. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Members, do you have any questions for Dr. Andrew at all? No hands coming up. Um, so thank you very much indeed for your for your time, Dr. Andrew. You're of course welcome to remain in the meeting um, as the um, application to the application is determined. But I, I would ask if you'd be kind enough to again turn your video off and um, just put yourself on mute. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Um, so next, um, I should like to invite um, Councillor Paul Ward from Tavistock Town Council. Um, again, uh, Councillor Ward, can you just confirm that um, you can hear us and we can hear you? You want uh, yes. to put your video on? OK, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I can hear you clearly. Lovely. Thank you. And I know that you know the drill, but again, just for members of the public, again, you will have three minutes um, and um, with a 30 second warning and time at the end. Thank so you. in your own time, then um, away you go. Thank you. Good morning, members. Um, Tavistock Town Council has twice considered this application on, and on both occasions objected to it, and we see no reason to change that view. Tavistock's uh, unique selling point is its heritage, and that heritage is comprised of uh, the built environment, the natural environment, and the town's history. And the river is an integral part of that heritage. So much so that in 2009, the conservation area was extended northwards as far as Mount Kelly to include much of the river. We object to this application primarily on the grounds that it is harmful to the heritage environment. The cantilevered decking is an alien intrusion into a semi-rural heritage site. The decking is visible from public sites, and I agree with Dr. Andrew that it's particularly visible from Vigo Bridge, which I crossed myself yesterday morning. And certainly while there are no leaves on the trees, or very few, it is indeed extremely visible. There is no clear evidence to us that the impact on the conservation area and the World Heritage Site had been seriously considered prior to the conservation officer's report. And I think I'm right in saying that the officer uh, did not mention the conservation officer's report during her presentation. That report wasn't available to us when we considered this application, but if it had been, there is no doubt that we would have agreed with it and endorsed it. Notably, the scale and form of this development does not follow established historic precedents. It is not sympathetic to the surrounding historic buildings in terms of uses, materials and details. It does not preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area. The deck is inconsistent with the natural river frontage and the development is harmful to both the conservation area and the World Heritage Site. There is no public benefit to justify or mitigate this harm. We further note the Environment Agency's reports, uh, particularly its most recent report, where it states very clearly that it cannot support this application. We also have concerns for the amenity of the neighbour. Um, we are uh, only too aware of the overlooking problem, and we do not consider that the officer's recommendation of an opaque barrier uh, to be acceptable. The opaque barrier may or may not help mitigate the overlooking, but it just increases the mass and intrusion created by this uh, structure. For all of these reasons, Madam Chairman, we ask this committee to refuse consent to the application. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was pretty much to time. Um, well done. Um, Members, do you have any questions for Councillor Ward at all? It would appear not. So um, thank you very much, Councillor Ward. And yep, you are welcome to remain for the rest of the meeting. 
So now I move to the ward member who has registered to speak. There are, there are two ward members, um, but uh, we always ask that um, just one ward member speaks on behalf of both, if both are in the same of the same view. Um, Councillor Spetigu, um, can you confirm um, if you're here that you can hear us, please? I can, can indeed. Hear you. Lovely, thank you. Um, and ward members actually have a little longer. They have five minutes. Um, so again, um, you will get a, a 30 second warning and um, then uh, at the end of that 30 seconds, I will ask you to wind up, okay? So in so. your own time, when you're ready, off you go, thank you. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, myself and Councillor Sellis, who also represents the South East Ward of Tavistock, have called this application in for your consideration because of two concerns. Firstly, and in agreement with Tavistock Town Council's DMNL committee, we consider that contrary to Dev 10 of the JLP, this proposal is harmful to the immunity of the neighbouring properties. And I, uh, feel, and I feel that this is relevant to properties on both, not only next door, but also on the other side of the River Tavy. Secondly, we are concerned that this proposal is harmful to the heritage immunity of the conservation area of the World Heritage Site. Apologies for this, but my presentation is going to jump around across topics a bit, but hopefully at the end it should all tie together. So in respect to the immunity for neighbouring properties, I've got several concerns. Firstly, the image on your screen, which was taken by me at the weekend, stood on Parkwood Road, shows that the site is plainly visible from the road. Parkwood Road is noted in the Conservation Officer's report as being of interest in terms of the World Heritage Site, and although the Conservation Officer's report states that the proposed could be visible from the gardens of Parkwood Road properties, this image makes it clear that the impact is greater than that due to being clearly visible to pedestrian users of Parkwood Road. There is also the question of immunity to the neighbours on the same side of the river, and I'll return to this point shortly. It's my interpretation that in light of the view shown in, the Im in this image, that DEV 21 and DEV 22 of the JLP should also now be considered in this matter. DEV 21 states that great weight will be given to the conservation of plan areas designated heritage assets, where development proposals will lead to any harm to, harm to the significance of the designated heritage asset. They must be fully justified against the public benefits of the development, of which I don't see any. Dev, two, Dev 22 apologies, states that the need to conserve and maintain existing historic fabric and to retain and reflect locally distinctive features in the design of buildings, layouts and landscapes to ensure the authenticity and integrity of the World Heritage Site is maintained. Having moved on to the matter of conservation and heritage status, I note that this application does not include a heritage assessment. The location is within the World Heritage Site, and I also note that the Conservation Officer has filed an objection. DEV 22 of the JLP states that proposals within Cormann and West Devon Mining Landscape World Heritage Site or its setting will conserve or where appropriate enhance the outstanding universal value of the site. And it goes on to say that all development proposals should be informed by proportionate historic environment assessments and evaluations. In my opinion, this clearly points to the necessity for a heritage assessment. Regarding the immunity of the next door neighbour, Dr Andrews, the application stipulates a condition whereby a fence with a minimum of 1.8 metres should be installed between the site and the neighbouring property. And this is, as we all really realise, to mitigate the matters of concern over immunity. However, there is no maximum height stipulated. And I'm unsure how this condition fits well with regard to DEV 21 and DEV 22 in respect of the potential impact of a fence in the World Heritage Site with no imposed limit on its height. Finally, I would like to address the matter of the Environment Agency's response dated 16th of the 4th, which adds clarity to their position, in my opinion, in regard to the extent of what has been built compared to what was shown in plans and agreed in a compromise agreement with the applicant. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them for you. Thank you. Members, do you have any questions at all? No, nope, absolute silence. OK, uh, thank you, Councillor Pet uh, Spetigo, for your, for your time. My pleasure. Okay, if I ask you to just turn your video off, it would be very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, members, do you have any further questions for the officers before we move this into debate? Councillor Hipsey. Uh, yes. Um, a question from Ms. Stansbury, please, um, I think. Um, 
one thing we don't think we've mentioned really is um, is lighting. I wonder if there's any integral lighting, please, associated with the um, uh, the decking that goes over the river. I'd like to take that one. Um, I can do that one, Chair. Um, I don't believe there is any lighting. I'm going to go back to my photos. Ah, right. Actually, that that photo shows it. There is there is a light um, there on on the rear wall of the property that would not need planning permission. But there is there's no actual lighting fixed on the decking, and we could impose a condition to prevent any lighting being added on. If members were minded to approve. Yeah, I, I just imagining this structure at night, if it was lit, um, it would clearly draw attention to itself. And uh, mm. I would definitely consider that to be uh, detrimental to the, the character of the area. But it, as you say, it, clear, it doesn't appear to have any lighting. I, I, I don't know whether uh, planning permission will be required to put lighting on that on the actual um, projection over the river or not? No, um, generally lighting does not require planning permission um, in itself. I mean, again, this yeah. this does show the, the floodlight there. Yeah. And I would also say, obviously, you've got quite large French doors here and a window. Um, other properties along the river have windows overlooking the river. So there is going to be a, a certain degree of lighting anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I take your point. Um, yeah. And I think you, you said earlier on that we're considering here the decking and not the building itself. But um, it, it strikes me, what my concern is that um, if this is approved, then uh, it would be entirely um, possible that the uh, the applicant could install lighting there um, along the, the decking itself without having to seek planning permission, which is which is a concern. Yeah, that is correct. And as I as I said, we could put on a condition to yeah. prevent any lighting being installed. Good. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, can, oh, Councillor Pierce's hand has gone. Councillor Moyes. Um, yes, I noticed in that last photograph that there's netting alongside the or covering the riverbank. Um, is that because, uh, I don't suppose anybody could answer this, but is that because the riverbank is uh, a bit dubious or is it, um, yes, that's the one, or is it um, if the river suddenly floods, as we know that river does come up quite high sometime to protect the riverbank? Um, i afraid i don't have the answer to that i mean yeah this no. these photos do show it it runs along the application property underneath the decking i know it also runs further along i don't know how far it goes down mm. yeah thank you councillor pierce yes i'd just like to make a comment chairman the netting normally like that is to stop erosion of the riverbank when it occurs and we all know that you know at times we have a substantial river going down here which <clears throat> uh, would come up to cover that bank so it's not part doesn't form part of this planning application i don't think is the is the actual bank as such it's um the netting well, I wouldn't bank have thought so. no no, no I, I would have thought that's been there for a while actually any further questions from members no Okie dokie. In that case, I will move um, uh, the recommendation for conditional approval with the addition um, of uh, preventing lighting to, sorry, a condition to prevent lighting to be added to the structure. Um, is there, a, a, and sorry, the conditional approval as laid out on page eight. Um, is there a second of that, please? Yes, Chairman. Happy to second, Councillor Pierce. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we are now in debate, members. Anybody wish to speak? Councillor Cheadle. Thank you, Chair. Um, normally, after uh, a, a good questioning session, I am left in some doubt about whether to um, uh, support the officer's recommendation or not. Uh, but fortunately, in this case, I'm not. I'm in no doubt at all that I don't support the officer's recommendation. I think this is a monstrosity in a World Heritage Site. I'm certainly not <coughs> be giving it my support. 
Thank you. Um, Councillor Hipsey. Um, I think Councillor Cheadle's just taken the words from my mouth. Um, it, this this does, I think the word monstrosity is, is well chosen. Um, I th I also, I think Dr Andrew makes some very forcible points about neighbour amenity, uh, which I think is, um, it, 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 it will certainly um, strengthen my resolve to, 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 um, to object to this. Uh, I'm worried about Dev 10, Dev 21, and Dev 22, where we don't appear to have a heritage assessment, not a formal and uh, separate one. Uh, I will definitely be voting against this. Councillor Basham. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I too have great concerns on this. Um, obviously, the, the original um, application was to, to build to the edge. And I, and I feel that this is obviously a retrospective that they, they built way over the edge. Um, and it's setting a precedent. Um, there's also the, the worry that there isn't a heritage assessment on this, and the conservation officer's report is obviously negative to this. Um, I'm, I'm just worried that also one of the original um, uh, objections or, or potential objections was with uh, river flooding at that at th th that point. Um, and if the river does get uh, quite a lot of flooding down there, and I know the river does flood, um, and we do get tend to get rather large trees and, and, and debris coming down there, which this may impact on that to a certain degree. But I think under the, the, the Dev 10, we should we, we should object to this. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I think we probably need to take into account that I think Dev 10 relates to new builds. Um, page 259, I think, on our joint local plan. Um, Delivering high quality housing. I think it's relating to actual new builds. So members, just to, if you're minded to object, you might need to just check your JLP and it's on page 259 and 260. Um, okay, so I am now with Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. I, I'm very disappointed actually in the, in the photos that were presented at the beginning because I actually visited Vigo Bridge uh, yesterday evening about half past six and on three separate positions in the middle of the bridge in each end you can actually see this uh, uh, construction uh, fairly clearly and I, I'm i horrified that once again we have an application before us which is nibbling away at the quality and integrity of our conservation area and quite frankly, this is an absolute carbuncle on this area. And I, I just find it quite saddening, actually, that any engineers or, or uh, company involved in this have, did not recognise the damage that they were doing to this important part of the river. Um, you, you know, we have important buildings on the opposite side of the river. If you stand on Vigo Bridge and look up through the river, there are no properties with anything that's out over the river like this will be. And although it's felt that the river bank belongs to the cartilage of the property, which it does to a degree, there is also a big uh, responsibility of the Environment Agency uh, to make sure that the river flows OK when it's in full flood. And I, I note in the Environment Agency re, uh, correspondence with us that they would not allow any uh, further, if this was approved today, they wouldn't allow any further similar constructions. Now, I don't see how they can say that because we all know what happens uh, once you get something in place and then others come forward with something and the planning inspector find it very difficult to refuse it. So therefore, I think with what's presented to us today and the damage to the conservation area, I certainly cannot support the officer's recommendation. It really is a monstrosity and, and would pose huge damage on this area of the river. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Renders. OK, Chair, I'm not going to spend too long on this um, because <laughs> practically everything I was going to say has just been said by the people before, but I join them completely and I will be voting against this. I'm afraid I don't like it at all. Thank you. OK. Councillor Ratcliffe. 
There we are. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Madam Chairman. Um, I think in, in looking at this application, um, the cantilever is not a modest structure. It is quite a large structure which encroaches certainly onto the river and certainly when it is in flood. I do not believe it enhances the environment or the river of an ancient town. This, this, this river contains salmon and sea trout and there are fishing rights on the river, which this to a certain extent could encroach upon. Um, I don't think or I believe that this can be viewed as demonstrated from a lot of points in the town and I don't think it, it helps the historic town or the environment. I was very mindful of the photograph which the officer had taken from the river of it, which looked fine. It looked like Falling Water, which is a major Frank Lloyd Wright building in America. But the one, that one in America and is world famous is built in a massive forest and doesn't have the detriment onto the area. So it can be designed and the design is important. I wouldn't object to the design on this. It is purely the extent of the cantilever and damaging the environment. Um, so I cannot support the officer's recommendation on this application. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And Councillor Mott. Thank you, Chair. Um, again, again, like many others have said, I'm not going to rehash what others have already said. However, as your council representative on the World Heritage Sites Board, I cannot support this application as it stands. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. OK, well, members, I think um, we've probably given a pretty full in debate. Councillor Rackley, if you'd like to take your hand down, that would be helpful. Thank you. I assume it's a legacy. Um, so um, on that basis, I think we will um, take this to the vote. Um, Ms Hoare, if you would be so kind. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Cheadle. I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Crozier. I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Hipsey. I've been present throughout the presentation and the debate and I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Mott. I do not support the officer recommendation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Moyes. Yes, I've heard the whole debate and I'm against the recommendation. Councillor Pierce. I've been present throughout the presentation and debate and I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. Yes, I've also been present throughout the debate and I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Renders. The same here, I'm afraid I can't support this one. Thank you. Councillor Vachon. Uh, present throughout and I do not support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. And Councillor Yelland. Present throughout, heard the debate and vote against the officer's recommendation. Thank you. So that's unanimous against. So we now need um, we now need an uh, alternative recommendation. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. OK, members. Um, so we, we, as uh, Ms. Hall said, we now need to, um, with our material planning reasons um, for the officer's to have so um ed, anybody like to make a proposal we've had um various discussions regarding the conservation area um and um i've just had a message from uh, mr weimer we've already voted but mr weimer did you wish to speak yes please chair just just before yeah. the the just before the 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 vote the, alter, the alternative proposal um as as usual can i can I suggest that members consider that it's um, de the, the, the final precise reasons are delegated to the um, the head of practice to be signed off with in conjunction with the chair, the seconder and proposer. Obviously, we will need members reasons, but I, would, I think it'd be better for those detailed reasons to be um, agreed. The precise reasons to be agreed, agreed um, on a delegated basis. And at the same time, I think as it is retrospective, members will need to consider um, whether we whether we ought to be taking enforcement action against the structure that's there if if the the vote if the application is refused. Thank you. There is an existing consent, isn't there, for um, the structure at a certain point? Yes, to a certain point, but obviously, yes. what, what's there at the moment goes beyond that. That's yep. right. Okay. 
So we, we need to then we need to have material reasons and then um, to uh, vote as to whether we wish the enforcement action to be pursued. So let's go with the material reasons first. Councillor Cheadle, you have your hand up. Well, yes, I was just going to suggest that we could take the wording direct from the officer's report on uh, page nine, which uh, requires an application in a conservation area to preserve or enhance the character and appearance. And as it states in her own report, this singularly fails to do that. From the, cons from the conservation officer's point of view? No, from the officer's point of view. Where are you on page nine? Um, um, well, in, in the text of the officer's which report. Which paragraphs? Under, well, the paragraphs aren't numbered, unfortunately. Um, okay. It we starts consideration down. of S72. It's That's the, top. the second paragraph, yeah. Yeah, and then the third paragraph yeah. says it all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And yes, I do uh, support enforcement action, should that be required. Well, well, we'll, required. We'll, we'll discuss that in a minute. Let's um, get the material okay. reasons first and foremost, please. Okay, okay. Um, so that yes that is the conservation officers um uh it is in the report but it is conversation conservation from the conservation officer report uh councillor pierce i think we should also add to uh the officer's wording that the certain significant harm uh to this area of the tavistock conservation area yeah and also the uh the harm, the detrimental impact on the amenity value of the and um, privacy of the surrounding properties. So it's not only the ones either side of this development, but it's the it's the uh, Parkwood Road villas on the opposite side of the river whose gardens come from their properties down to the river edge. So anyone enjoying their peaceful time in the in the in their garden we'll see this monstrosity if it's not removed okay thank you um councillor vashon thank you chair i'm just wondering if uh, policy dev 21 covers this which is development affecting historical environment um under um item three their development that harms the significance of locally important non-designated heritage assets um which i'm thinking is is probably the river in this case but uh, I, I'd, I'd like to be um, advised if that's the case. Yep. Okay, so um, so really, do, yeah, policy dev 21 was a, was a fair bit within that, actually. Chair, can I help? Yes, please. Um, I think dev, I think given what the, um, the concern members have, I think dev 21 is, is very much the the key or a key policy um, uh, and rather than rather than a non-designated heritage asset I think what members are saying is it has an adverse impact on a designated heritage asset being the conservation area yeah so I, I, I think that, that dev 21 um, very much is and I and I would I would say that what what members I think what members are saying is that it causes harm to that heritage asset and that harm is not outweighed by a public benefit. Okay. You happy, happy with that? For, happy, happy for members to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in terms of the, the impact on the conservation area, I believe that's that's fundamentally what you're saying. Members, we, Councillor uh, Castillo, you have spoken once actually, so Councillor Hipsey. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, no, I was just, um, uh, speaking to agree with uh, with Whistler Weimer, I think that 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 hits it nicely on the head. And uh, in in terms of, I know we're going to go on and talk about that, but in terms of enforcement action, um, I think if we don't act uh, firmly on this, it, it sets a very unpleasant uh, yeah, can, precedent. Can, can um, we come back to that one in a minute? Yeah, course, yeah. Otherwise, I don't want yeah. to scuffle people because they've already spoken once on it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. So. Um, Okay, so I think we've we've got our grounds. If everybody is happy, unless anybody wanted to add anything more to that, so we um, need a proposer and a seconder for that. Councillor, do so you still have your hand up? Are you proposing? I'm happy to second, Chairman. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, and 
do uh, so do we need to actually take a vote or can we um, do, go by exception given that everybody voted against we had a unanimous vote against the application I would have thought um, Daryl are you there Mr White is thank you very much members I would recommend this one's taken by a named recorded vote in okay the public interest and the fact we're streaming as well okay okay righty ho okay so um, uh, Mr Weimer yeah, uh, apologies chair can I just be um, can, officer, I think we need to be absolutely clear what what the reasons are. I'm comfortable that I understand the reason around the impact on the the conservation area. Are members also voting on impact on neighbouring amenity as well? Yeah, this is, um, uh, I can't remember, um, uh, maybe in Councillor Cheadle who put this forward or just whoever spoke after him, maybe in Councillor Pierce actually, about yeah. the significant harm to the area, the conservation area and detrimental impact. Um, and the Im immunity, value and privacy of the surrounding properties. Okay. Plus, we have the um, element that's referred to in the Conservation Officer's Report. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. what we Thank are looking at. Thank you. And can that be a, a, a delegated to officers for the final wording for agreed final with you, wording. the chair? And, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. OK, members, um, so we will go with a uh, recorded vote, Ms Hall, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Cheadle. Sorry, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure what we're voting on at the moment. Right, we're, we're voting on the reasons um, for refusal. Okay, that's fine. OK, yes, I, that's I support the reasons as, as indicated. And that we were um, also that, that the actual wording will be then delegated to the head of planning. Exactly that. And yes, I'm happy with that. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cheadle. Councillor Crozier. Yes, I'm happy with the proposal as it stands with thank senior you. officers finalising the wording. Thank you. Councillor Hipsey. Uh, for the motion. Thank you. Councillor Mott. Support. Thank you. Councillor Moyes. Um, for, but... Um, Hopefully the deputy chair would be involved as well. I always think the chair and deputy chair should be involved in these things. Yes, thank you. Councillor Pierce. Uh, support the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. Thank you, Chair. I also support the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Renders. Yes, I'm for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vachon. Yes, I support the proposal. Thank you. And Councillor Yellen. Four. Thank you. That, that's unanimous. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so now we need to move on to whether um, we wish to um, see enforcement action carried out. Um, any questions, actually, first of all, I think on that, Councillor Pierce? Oh, I was going to propose that we take enforcement action. Um, but I'll wait until in case anyone has any questions before. Yeah, let's I... just let's just pick up any questions first and foremost. Yeah. Any members yeah. have any if you take your hand down, be helpful. Thank you. Then I know um, any members have any questions. No. OK, so Councillor Pierce, if you'd like to make your proposal. OK, I propose that we take enforcement action uh, to remove the overbearing structure, which does not comply with the previously approved plans and I would hope that uh, we do not take a long time over dealing with this. Thank you. Councillor Mott, are you happy to second that? Absolutely, thank you Chair. Thank you very much. Members, any debate members? No, nope. okay again so if we can go to the vote on that one please Ms Hall. Thank you Chair. Councillor Cheadle. I support the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Crozier. I support the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Hipsey. Support the proposal. Thank you. Councillor Mott. Support. Thank you. Councillor Moyes. Support. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Support. Thank you. Councillor Ratcliffe. I support. Thank you. Councillor Renders. Support. Thank you. Councillor Vachon. Support. And Councillor Yelland. Four. Thank you. That's unanimous, Chair. Lovely. OK, thank you very much. Um, OK, so if we then move to item six, which is page 19 to 20, planning appeals update. Um, Mr Weimer, please. Thank you, Chair. Just bear with me a second. I'll just get the appropriate part of the agenda. 
I think we're all doing that. <clears throat> mm, yeah, I, I inadvertently shut the system down, which is not my smartest move for the morning. So apologies, bear with me a second. OK, so there's a, um, I think it's three appeals to three appeal decisions to bring to members attention. Um, I'll go through on the on the, the order they are on the agenda. The first um, the first one was um, an outline application at um, BF errors. The, the inspector fundamentally said that in the that didn't consider that the that it was an appropriate location for development. And in the absence of clear and comprehensive evidence of, evidence of a locally distinctive need, it was contrary to both joint local plan and neighbourhood plan um, policies. The second one, a number, if I recall rightly, this the second one at Barwick Downs, uh, Iddersley, was one where there was a member site visit some time ago. Unless I've, unless I'm mistaking it, confusing yes. with another site, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Um, that was one where members went, and I, and I think yeah. it was. Right. It was yes. I think it was also. It was also um, an application that um, split the committee almost fifty-fifty. I think it was. A, it was memory. It's a very, very close um, decision. Um, the, if, I think f fundamentally, what the what the inspector has said is that the joint the joint local plans underlying aims are to ensure that. Development is cited in such a way as to minimise travel and ensure um, that, with, with regard to tourism development, it was being provided in appropriate places where and where it was needed. And this location was contrary to the joint local plan. It was as it was read as a whole. I think that that's that's certainly my summary of the of what was said. Um, and the the final decision. <coughs> Is, is is an outline application um, land at Wimbarn House. Um, I'm, I must admit, I found this I found this appeal decision a little bit more more difficult to follow. But um, the inspector started off saying it's not isolated because it's within a settlement. But Ottery was not identified as a sustainable in the joint local plan, and as such, the, any new housing development there would be contrary to the the open the overall approach in the joint local plan for the delivery of sustainable development. So it, it, it was contrary to the, the sort of the settlement hierarchy and the proposed um, location of, of new development when you read the plan as a whole. They are the three appeal decisions. Happy to answer any questions from members on those. Thank you. Um, members, do you have any questions at all? No. OK, thank you. So then we just uh, move, which is to the last item on the agenda, item number seven, which is the undetermined major applications. Mr. Wyman. Again, I, as, as usual, I won't go. I won't go through this on a case by case basis, but happy to answer or try to answer any questions I've got. I know I haven't had any questions in advance about this, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions members may have. Um, and given this is purely just to look at the process, uh, does any members have any questions? I'd, uh, just suggest you take take note particularly of anything that's in your particular ward um, and if you need to follow up with your local parish or town council okay it would appear not thank you very much mr weimer um, and that actually does bring us to the end of our agenda so thank you all for your time um Ms. Krugan, if you'd like to stop the live stream and confirm it when you have done so please Checking if she's there. Um, I can't actually see Vicky here. They can one of the office please contact her and ask her to uh, finish the live stream, please, because we do have a.